Hi there, it's Rob Sayer again. Welcome to the fifth of our Vectorworks Spotlight Basics tutorials. Today we're going to be adding some LX positions to hang some fixtures on and also some fixtures themselves. So let's get straight on with it. If you remember last time, I drew a little theatre um, with some elements to it, uh, pros elements, and also I added some scenic elements as well on our set and stage uh, layers and set class. So what I've done since then is I've just added a center line here and a uh, setting line. So I just drew two lines and changed their properties using the uh, the, the fill and line uh, attributes palette. So what we're going to do now is we're going to work straight onto our roof level. So we're going to be where our rig is. So I'm going to go to layer rig, and I'm also going to go to uh, our set uh, our LX class. And you notice I changed the layer. And, um, everything got kind of went a bit funny, it changed colour a bit. Uh, what that was is that I've got my uh, navigation palette to set to, at the moment, snap, grey, snap, others. Now these settings here uh, relate to the, all of the layers or all of the classes and they're quick ways of changing visibility and stuff and also meaning that you can't uh, move things and uh, edit things you don't want to particularly. So there's a few options there. Um, when you've got time sometime you can work out what they do. The one that lets you do absolutely everything uh, all the time is the one at the bottom, Show, Snap, Modify Others. Uh, it means you can work on any layer and any class and you can see it all at the same time. The reason that I haven't got that on at the moment is for a bit of for clarity so that the layer and class that I'm working on is the one that you can see the best. So, Okay, so we're in LX class and we're also on our roof layer. The first thing I want to do is I want to draw myself a lighting bar. So I can't remember whether we uh, actually drew a lighting bar when we were talking about the double line last time, double line tool, but uh, that's what I'm going to do now. So my first bar, I'm just all I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a bar and I'm going to give it a 50mm separation. So if you remember, you can go to the tools up there and 50 millimeters across. Create polygons, which will create a very long rectangle. And I'm just going to drag out a bar and I'm going to tab it in and call it 7 meters. So 7m, double enter. Now, I could just draw this bar, that could be fine, I could start working on it. But I want, what I want, actually want to do is I want to turn that bar into a symbol. So it's a bar that um, I can use over and over again throughout my theatre. So what I'm going to do is I've got the bar selected. You can see it's got an orange line around it. You go to the, the Modify panel again, obviously. Everything's in the Modify panel. And I'm going to hit Create Symbol. And I'm going to call this 7 meter Bar. I'm going to uncheck, uncheck Leave Instance in Place and uh, leave everything else uh, as is, as you can set there, plan projection center, and then I'm going to get OK. And you can see the first thing that happens is my bar has disappeared. That was because all we were doing there was we were creating a symbol that I can use for a lighting bar. So the whole thing about symbols in Vectorworks is that you can create all kinds of things you can use again and again, and you can also assign properties to them. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a symbol for my 7 meter lighting bars so I can add as many lighting bars on stage as I want to. And where you'll find that symbol is in the resource browser. So if you just check your, in the document you're on at the moment and you're on top level, you should see 7 meter lighting bar. And also down here you can see the active symbol, the symbol that we're using at the moment, is also the one we've just created, which is 7 meter lighting bar. Now next time I do something with that, I can drag it in, I can keep drawing, let me just delete that a sec. Um, I can, you know, add another another lighting bar um, or drag another one in um, like that. But that's that's kind of only that's only halfway good. What we really want to do is we want to turn these seven meter bars into lighting positions so that we can actually hang lights on them and they'll behave in the same way as a real bar in, in a theatre would. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that my seven meter bar is active here and if it isn't just double click on it and it should there appear at the bottom of your resource browser and then I'm going to go over to my spotlight up to my over to my spotlight thing and go tool sets spotlight light position object and what that will do is it says up here a lot of the tools up here tells you what it is it says click to insert the lighting position using the active symbol so seven meter bar is the active symbol and we're going to just just where the center line is and the setting line is, I'm going to click, double click, and then it will give me a light position object. And I'm going to call that an X1. Everything else is fine, I don't mind about that. So this is my first lighting position object. 
and you can see just upstage or just actually on the setting line I've got a lighting bar now I'm just going to move it up there a touch so it's not quite so so it's just behind just behind the pros there so that's my first lighting bar I'm going to create another couple of lighting bars in the same way so I'm going to go back again to light position I'm going to create one upstage, double click, and what that's done is it's given me another one, and it's calling them all LX1 at the moment, but that's not a problem, because what we're going to do is we're going to, with that one selected, we're going to go back to the Object Info browser, and we'll see that we can change that one to LX2. So that's 2, and that's LX3. So you can see there's lots of information in the Object Info browser. I'll let you to look at that at your own uh, leisure. Um, but basically what we've done is we've created a symbol, which is called we've called 7 meter lighting bar, and we've created three light positions, three lighting positions out of that symbol. So what we're now going to do is to move on, and we're going to move on to uh, actually adding some fixtures. Now, as you see, you can obviously, if you wanted to, you could create symbols. Uh, for your lighting fixtures and then you could turn them into lights and you could do all that sort of thing but if you just want to use some standard fixtures the best thing you can do for, with Vectorworks is to use the Vectorworks libraries so what I'm going to do is I'm going to if you go to your resource browser go to the first arrow on the top right hand side and, they, and go to add new favorite files what that's going to do that's going to look uh, in your hard drive for the Vectorworks libraries now mine's opened up in Vectorworks 2010 which is handy I'm going to open libraries, I'm going to go to objects entertainment and let's go to ETC, so lighting ETC okay and now we can see in my resource browser I have the option when I'm uh, to go to lighting ETC instruments which will then give me a load of ETC lights and they're all, in, they're all set as a symbol and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a source for junior, a source for junior zoom. So I'm going to double click on that to make it the active active symbol. And then it says, did you know that double clicking the lighting device symbol will automatically activate the instrument insertion tool? And I go, yes, okay, thank you. So what that's done is it's basically selected here the instrument insertion tool. Uh, and the next time I click, I'm going to add an ETC source for zoom. So on the end of my bar, I'm going to just click angle and click and then I'm going to do the same again so click focus and click and I'm going to do one more okay what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open these up so we can see them all Okay, so I've got three source fours on my bar. If you remember in the last tutorial, we used the mirror tool to do something quite cunning, and we used it to create um, some more objects. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just select those three lanterns. I'm going to hit the mirror tool, and then I'm going to just draw my mirror plane basically along the center line. So to there, to there. And you can see that's given me the same again, same lanterns, sort of lanterns again. So I've now drawn six lanterns on my bar, and what I can do just to show you is I'll just move my bar, and you can see those lanterns are actually rigged on the bar. They're not just sitting on top as a symbol; they're actually rigged on the bar. So the next thing you want to do is obviously you want to know how you can add different attributes to those lanterns, maybe to different colours and all kinds of things. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select one of the lanterns. I'm going to go to my Object Info palette. And you'll see that there's a lot of information there. There's, you know, the position that it's already on, LX1. There's the instrument type, which is a source for junior zoom. And then there's a wattage. And there's a lot of other things here as well. Colour, dimmer, channel, all those sorts of things you'd be used to as a lighting designer. Um, so what you can do is you can in individually, obviously, you could change uh, things like that. You could change, you could add a colour and stuff like that. So I could uh, put in, well, Lee 117. Why not? And you know, but also I could also do it multi do it by multiples. So I'm going to select the other two fixtures on the stage right side. I'm also going to go to color, 
Lee one one ooh, Lee one one seven. That, that's great, and those fixtures, if you see, I select them, they have that information on them, but it's not showing up on my plan. The reason for that is, is we haven't set a way to actually set the legend out on the plan yet, so we need to go to Tools, Labeled Legend Manager, and we need to basically create a legend system for those lanterns. So I'm going to go Add, and we're going to call this Standard, doesn't matter what you call it, and you see it says instrument source for zoom. So what that does is it gives you the option to be able to create a lot of different labels for different types of fixtures, maybe practicals or different lanterns or whatever. Um, so this is going to be our standard one and we're going to go to select it and we're going to go edit fields. In those fields I want to put purpose, I always want purpose on my plan, I always want colour and I often want dimmer. Maybe you could say let's have, also let's have unit number as well. If you're really keen you can have unit number. I can find it. There it is. Right. Okay, so I'm going to go okay. So that's got all those different things in there, but I also need to lay out where they're going to go. So I'm going to go edit layout. Now my unit number, don't know about you, unit numbers for me usually go in the middle there somewhere. But you can put them where you like. I'm going to drag and drop dimmer down the back here. I'm going to put colour in front of the in the front of the gel frame or where the gel frame is I'm actually going to zoom in a bit so I can do that and purpose I'm going to put all the way up here and then I'm going to be even more cunning and do what I would do if I was drawing a hand drawn plan which I would then rotate it so that it actually fitted out lengthways on my drawing okay so that's uh, all of the things. That's what my uh, my uh, layout of my label legend is going to be like. I'm just going to go here to exit symbol, and then I'm just going to just update these by uh, with these. I have to uh, click them and then uh, OK. This is it might be something particular for Vectorworks 2010, but for some reason once you've set them, you have to then double click them and refresh them on the drawing. Okay, so. You can see now, I've put some colour in those, they've got Lee 117 in them. I haven't given them a purpose, um, or a dimmer number, or anything like that. But I could still do the same thing, I could give them all three a purpose. So I'm going to go to, um, so we're going to go cool uh, cover maybe. Okay, you can see now that's added that in there. Um, I could also add them, add numbers uh, to them, kind of semi-automatically. So what I could do was go to uh, modify number instruments. I'm going to choose unit number, start one, increment one, and then I'm going to go OK. And and it gives me a bit of in information, and I go OK. So this one is one, that one is two, that one is three, that one is four, that one is five, mm, no, that one is six. Okay, so you can see now that's given me some uh, that's given me some instrument numbers, and obviously you can see if you double click on the fixture, it pops up and open the box, and you can set all kinds of information on there. I'll let you have a bit of a play around with that and see what you can work out. Um, but basically, that's how to get some lighting symbols onto your plan in a kind of ordered manner. So what we've done is we've created a lighting bar, seven meter lighting bar symbol. We've turned it into a light position object, so it's actually genuinely a lighting position, not just a drawing. And we've also added some source for juniors from the Vectorworks library, which we found in the uh, resource browser. So next time you come back, we'll have a look at doing some more work on lighting uh, and organisation of data and stuff. But uh, until then, have a bit of a play around with those. Add as many Fresnels and barn doors and everything else you can find in the Vectorworks libraries as you like. And um, I'll see you next time.